was a dark, stormy night <laughs> somewhere in the U.S. Um, about seven years ago, I discovered screenwriting. I'd already been doing stand-up, and I was in New York taking a class that was very expensive to teach me how to write a pilot. Mm -hmm. The pilot I was working on at the time, kid you not, was called Blackish. Oh, dope. Till I saw that damn Lawrence Fishburne poster <laughs> for the ABC show. Um, but I was taking a class, a writing class in New York about a kid who was biracial and was raised by a black woman. He didn't know his father was white. Gotcha. Politician, ruthless, take it wherever you want. And so, um, you know, I'm walking the streets and I, like I said, I see the ad for Blackish. And this is as you guys are writing your pilot out. This is as I'm writing my pilot out. This is okay. actually, I take that back. It's probably eight years ago because right. it was clearly before Blackish was out. Right. So, anyway, um, at the time I was taking this class, great showrunner. He was an awesome guy. Um, turned out to be an awesome mentor, too. Was like, if you really want to be in a writer's room, you need to be in LA. Mm. And I was like, damn. I don't know. I thought LA was like another planet. So I was discouraged and it took money and I was like, fine, I, I think that's where I should be. Obviously I came out here for like a month with no kids mm -hmm. um, and explored and tried to figure things out and found out that my husband had an aunt married in who had a cousin who was a showrunner on a BET show at the time. Damn, so you knew somebody who knew I knew who somebody, knew somebody who knew somebody right. who knew somebody. <laughs> And so it was like summer of 2014. We came out here and I met with her and she was amazing. Very, very down to earth. Um, older black woman had done Moesha and Martin oh, nice. and just took me in like I was blood, you know. Yeah. And we're, your information. Right? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and we're at the Coffee Bean in Studio City, I think. Mm -hmm. And we're just talking and she's telling me how, you know, I can't really be a writer on my show right away, but I can maybe do a writer's assistant mm -hmm. or maybe a PA writer, you know, a writer, uh, what is it? A writer PA for the room or something like that. Right. And, I, and I'm not listening because Eddie Murphy walks in. What? At the coffee shop. At the coffee shop. Damn, that's Studio City for you. He looked like a wax figure. Damn. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, is that Eddie? Perfect, just perfect skin, perfect everything. He just got his coffee and left. I didn't say anything to him. I know, you ready for it. So anyway, uh, a week later, she and I get together. So that was it with the Eddie? That was Murphy? it with Eddie. Hey, <laughs> I'm so nothing? sorry. I, I was frozen. I didn't just know what let, to say. It was, just it let was, Ray Gibson <laughs> come into the coffee shop. You may say, oh, I would have been like, Ray. You don't even say Sorry, well, watch the room. Say little clock. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Okay. First of all, I was in an interview, low key. Right. That's true. That's true. And you I was like, cool. right, because I would have been one of them fans, right? Yeah. So, and plus, I live nearby, so I was like, I'm gonna see him again. We gonna we gonna cross paths. Okay. A week or so later, she and I hook up again, and she's waiting on BET to let her know when the room will be ready to open up so they can start writing. Mm -hmm. Within an hour of us meeting, this headline drops that her show got canceled. Damn. And she just gets on the phone, and she's just, you know, one second, hold on. What? Excuse, what? You know, it's a lot of that, and I'm just like, right. oh, shit. I know you ain't got no job, but damn, I don't have a job either, right. you know? Like, so I ain't in here? Right, so you sure you don't need nobody? <laughs> Clean your house or something for a couple right. weeks? I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm gonna be good, you know? And believe it or not, she ended up taking me everywhere to all kind of, like, meetups and and she knew everybody because she worked for BET had written for Martin Moesha I mean so, um what's the show uh do, 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 I can't think right now that? but um Tracy Ellis Ross remember when Girlfriend. Tracy Ellis Ross she did Girlfriends but oh, Malcolm that. Jamal Warner remember oh, her and yeah yeah, yeah 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 so she had done that show and everything oh, that's fine. she was cool you know she really schooled me and then she was like I need to take some time mm -hmm. because I'm I'm hurting you know I need to step away from the industry for a second and I was like, I get it. A couple months go by. This is like July, August. How long had you lived here? At this Two point? months. Okay. And <laughs> my rent was like three grand in Encino. Right. And I'm right. like, you know, I only got a little bit left. What are we going to do? Right. And so my husband knew somebody. The nigga knows everybody. My husband knew somebody and was like, give me that pilot, blackish pilot that you wrote, that you looking for a title, grayish. Nigga, no, that don't right. work. Right. He's like, give me your pilot. There's a new writer coming up, and I think you should talk to her. And I was like, I don't want to meet nobody now. 
I didn't, I didn't love meeting people. So I was like, fine. Here we go. Coffee bean again. This time, no ho. Same coffee bean? Nope. Oh, different coffee different bean. Different coffee bean. Okay. Just the one with the real? Mm-hmm. The real yeah. Right there on the corner. I've some beans yep. over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one. Right. They be working over there. They be working over there. there. <laughs> coffee bean. I ain't been in the one with the million dollar right, bean yet, but right. I've seen beans over there. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. So I get there, and at the time, I didn't think much of it. I didn't know who she was. I didn't think she was anyone uh, necessary, you know, important. Sure. She was right on a show called Bones. And, okay. you know, I was just a UCB student right. trying to find a job. Now, I'm going to be real. When I first came to L.A., my first thought was like, oh, I just give you a script and I get in the room. Right. No, it does not work like that. It takes you a good eight to ten years to get in the room. Wow. So anyway... I shoot her, I, you know, give her my script, and she's like, okay, I'll hit you up, I'll, I'm going to read it, and I'm going to have a, people, some people do like a, 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 what do you call it, when they read the script, gosh, I'm blanking uh, on everything, uh, uh, um, table, read? table read, thank yeah. you, she's like, and then we'll, I'm going to give you feedback, and we'll stay in touch, I was like, okay, I thought she wasn't going to hit me up, hit me up the next day, Dang. call me, say, come back this weekend, I'm going to put you in my calendar, I got some people, they're going to read your script, give you some notes. And she gave me great feedback. She said it felt a little dated, whatever, whatever. Mm. But she was like, I really want to work with you. And I was like, okay. She was like, there's somebody I know that's looking for a writer's assistant on a new show. Mm-hmm. Out in Long Beach, mind you, I'm hiking from Encino. Encino yeah, that's, that's, I was like, cool, cool, like I don't care, tank. whatever. That's a full tank. <laughs> that's a very full <laughs> tank. <laughs> and she was like, you know, um, send me your resume. And I was like, okay. Now, at the time, I think my resume was maybe over a page. Bitch, you ain't done shit. Right. What you got on your page, right. you know? And so I sent her the resume. <laughs> the team player. Grew up in the Midwest. Um, and she hit me back and was like, trim it down to a page. Get it right back to me. So I did all that. And mind you, I'm following her, you know? I don't know this woman. I hadn't heard much. Matter of fact, somebody in my UCB class, I threw her name to them. And I said, have you heard of her? And they were like, you know what? I wrote with her on a show. Mm. Masterpiece Daughter had a show on Nickelodeon. You remember huh. that show? Whatever the baby's name was, it was called that show. Huh. You can IMDb it later. Okay. But they had heard of her as this up-and-coming writer. And I was like, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, can somebody read my script? I'm just right. trying to get a job. And a lot of the UCB people were also either writer's assistants, PAs, or maybe just worked for an, you know, an agency. So nobody really had come up. I mean, I was level two at the time. It wasn't, you know, nobody was nobody. Right. Sent my resume. The next day, they call me from Long Beach. Damn. Man and wife, Tamala Mann, David Mann. That's another name. That sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Gospel artist. Okay. Gospel okay. artist. Okay. Huge. Okay. Sang for Kirk Franklin back in the okay. day. Okay. Oh, do, 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 I'm big of yes. TP. Are you with <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. We on a week. Yes, well, them. Okay, yeah. Them. Uh, <laughs> Tamala Mann can blow, yeah, right? Yeah, David yeah. Mann, funny, yeah. can sing, right? So they're coming up with this show. Tony Rock is on it. Dope. The mama from Family Matters, Vivica Fox. Okay. Everybody, Harriet? right? Harriet. Harriet. Oh, yeah. Joe I'm Marie, Harriet. man. Oh. So, so <laughs> all up in my shirt, sorry. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I go out there for the interview. Okay. They were like, we love you. We'll take you. Dope. And I was like, well, when do I start? He was like, can you hang out and get some tacos? Wow. I was like, yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. kind of welcome I want to get invited <laughs> into a circle. You want some tacos? Right. Stay, hang out. Like, oh, yes. In the end of the day, I asked him, I said, why did you hire me? He said, because Lena Waithe spoke highly of you. Mm-hmm. She was the one at the coffee bean, passing wow. my script around hooking me up and I kid you not I told this story last night talking to another writer and he was like do you know Lena Waithe (laughs) and I was like do I she got me my very first job with mind you I knew no one I had nothing my script was in it was called blackish so by the time she got it it was untitled and she took a chance and sent me out and it was a blessing I mean and I I used to get mad about working on that show for other reasons that I can't mention but (laughs) I look back at the relationships I remember going to Tony Rock one night after filming and I was like I I hate stand-up he was like why do you hate stand-up and I was like and this was me finding my voice I didn't know what I was supposed to be telling jokes about Mm -hmm. and I was just in this rut and he was like first of all you're a comic you're not an up and coming comic. Mm. You're not a new comic. You are a comic. Claim it. Believe it. Walk in it. 
we mess up all the time. The greats mess up too, but right. walk in it, you know? And so that advice stuck with me and I was like, well, now I gotta stop introducing myself as this newcomer or this, mm -hmm. I'm just got here from New York right. and New York is so supportive and LA is so competitive. Like I had to just change my dialogue when I met people. And he, he was great. Joe Marie from Family Matters, are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Mm -hmm. Like, she referred me to her agent. She and I still text to this day. Harriet? Harriet! Damn it, Harriet, DM me <laughs> real quick. I don't know what Eddie, Proud family. Eddie and them doing. But. Like she sent me, she she sent me like the best text message when uh, I was like about to give birth, and she has always checked in. Uh, she seems so sweet too. It's, it's dope to know that she actually. Oh my did. gosh, and that's what I'm trying to say. Like David and Tamala Mann, like I, I, you just could not ask for a better cast and crew. Nice. And my head writer, he was amazing. Now, mind you, a lot of these people had worked with Tyler Perry and mm -hmm. had started this show with them, and David and Tamala, I mean, they're married and, right, and kids right. and you know what I'm saying but they have a ooh. cool dynamic of how they work together and to build together and tolerate each other for so much time and it seems like they're enjoying life and I'm like that's just the best way the best out. way ever and and yeah. he was so dope like he and I would just sit in the parking lot and just talk David man and he's funny yeah. and I was like have you ever thought about doing stand up and right. he was like people ask me all the time but I, 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 I'm I too busy I can't I'm singing I'm acting I can't right. do it all and I was like I get it everybody's walk is different but the funny thing is though when the writer and I were talking last night and he said do you know Lena? And I said, I do. And he said, well, if you know any writers that are trying to take classes, you know, with all that's going on, people are, you know, taking classes online. Right. She's paying for new writers to take these classes. And I thought, <laughs> here we are, almost seven years later after meeting, meeting Lena for the very first time, she's still kind of taking people in. And, right. and I'm not going to lie to you, L.A. can be really rocky. Right. I've asked plenty of people, will you be my mentor? Will you help me out? Will you read the script? You get the L.A. no, right. where they give you their info, right. and you send it. Me up. We and you don't... <laughs> the lab, yeah, man. Look, I... Bill, you be like, this. she ain't even hit me back, man. He's talking all that shit at the party. I sent, <laughs> I sent a script to somebody from ABC. <laughs> And I had a, a read receipt, and I could see her opening everything. Man. No response. Man. Like, yo, what's up? But Woke like, up the people, next morning, like, really? <laughs> you done opened my email response. 14 uh, times, you uh, know? And I just was <laughs> like, there are really good people in this industry yeah. that bend down and help. Yeah. Then there are people who are out for themselves. Yeah. And I, have, I was so blessed to just meet them as soon as I got here. Mm. You know? And fell into the right hands. Fell into the right hands. Yeah, and yeah. at the time, like I said, Lena was working on Bones. And when I sat down with her those Saturdays, she was like, I'm trying to get this show off the ground called The Shy. Uh, it's about my city. Wow. I lived on the same street as Lena where she grew up because she's from Chicago. Oh, snap. And I was like, yeah, I lived on Mulford Street. She was like, Mulford Street? What hundred block? I said 700. She was like, I lived on 700 too. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we was there for a grip. And we just connected. And, oh. you know, you so you meet people and people get discouraged because in this industry, Having done it for a minute, yeah. you know, and you waiting for yours, right. you meet some good people along the way. I have started making a list of all the no's, all the doors that got shut. Mm -hmm. And I heard somebody else do it, and he said he got to 109 before his big yes mm -hmm. that changed his career. And I'm at like 75. Yeah. I'm like, okay, Lord, where you at? Right. And I'm going to get kind of big. Right. I don't need triple <laughs> digits now. Right. Right. But you, you just don't know who you're going to be who you're going to come into contact with and how they'll tell, help you. Lena could have stopped at the at the coffee bean stop. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, right. And then the woman who 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 her show didn't it got canceled Damn. after like 3 seasons. Wow. I and, think that's the cool part about LA though is like once you're here and you kind of get it and I, for some people it takes 3 months, for some people it takes 3 years, 30 years. <laughs> but I think once you realize like there is no timetable for any of this, I need yeah. to get comfortable. That's why whenever a newcomer first comes to the, hey, man, well, you got any advice, nigga? Get a job, sit down, relax, get comfortable, whatever you got to do to get comfortable, because this is a marathon. Like yeah. Nipsey Hussle says, it's a marathon, not a race. So you just don't know when an opportunity is going to come or how it's going to come. So be good to everybody. Everyone. You don't know you don't who know anybody when you're gonna come back is. Full all right, and, yeah. and, and be patient and enjoy yourself. Yeah. And you, and you get, you're going to get discouraged. I mean, with anything. Yeah. Gosh, I had a conversation with some teenagers yesterday about sex. But wow. the point is... Um, I was explaining climaxing again. Go, go with me. Just go with me. And to I, the children. <laughs> I have a sixteen-year-old. I could, just say, I could just, stay oh, with me. Oh wow! So and she's got a boyfriend. So, oh man, I'm not ready for that talk. And My they don't. Was like seven years old. I'm just <laughs> dreading that talk. She said we were watching TV the other day. She's like, ha ha ha, that he got hit in the peanuts. Ha ha. And I was like, who told you what the fuck peanuts is? 
What do you mean peanuts? I was like, oh, damn, baby, know what balls is. Oh, she knows peanuts. So is that what I gotta look forward to in the next? What? No, it's, seven, it gets, it gets <laughs> it, it, like you said earlier, it gets raw. Wow. It gets very raw. Wow. And this is my first one <laughs> out the gate. And and she's got a boyfriend. And mind you, they started dating pre COVID. Uh. And they're still together because of COVID. So uh. I know other people are mad at COVID for other reasons. Sure. I'm pissed at COVID because my baby is on a year and a half relationship right now because oh, these niggas don't have serious. nothing else to do but date. Right. Right? And miss each other. And miss each other. Right. And he's. He's amazing. Wow, he's a good dude. He's a good oh, dude. Oh, that's awesome. I good hope dude. Oh, oh, that's the best you can hope he for. He comes over with food every wow, time. Wow, wow. He came with Krispy Kreme, and I said, you can't do that. Damn. I just had a baby. Damn. I need to get that weight off, not put new weight on. <laughs> right. Come with one donut. He put what his mouth donut. over, his finger over your lips, like, shh, shh, <laughs> Just enjoy these donuts, okay? I'm going to be in the back with your daughter. He brought tacos <laughs> yesterday, and he's Honduras. Honduran, oh, okay. so he yeah, yeah. he brings the real. Oh, uh, Hondurans be eating though too, but they be eating. Mm, they don't miss a beat. They don't miss a beat. Right. But he's a good kid, and so they hit me with this question about sex, and wow. somehow we got on climax. And I said, "Would wow. you climb a mountain?" They sit here, and they're gonna hate me for this, because right. <laughs> their 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 argument was, "Yeah, they're gonna hate me for this." Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> the the argument was, you know, if we do this, we won't have sex. Huh. We'll just do this. Uh, we won't have sex. We can refrain. Uh, I said, no, you can't. Right. No, you can't. Right, Let right. me explain something to you. Why would you climb a mountain? Right. Right. This is our clip. This is our climax. Right. Why would you climb a mountain halfway and then stop and go back down? Mm. You're going to go all the way up that bitch, then yeah. come down and be like, not bad. Where's a cigarette? No, you you going to go, feel good. Damn right. You're you going to go top and take a selfie. <laughs> You better hope you're taking no selfies when you get to the top of my daughter. Dude, right. You can up her. You're not getting no damn nothing for this. And I have oh four daughters. So You have four? I have four daughters. Oh, man. And this is the oldest one. This is the oldest. Okay. Well, that, I think that that's good because, number one, <laughs> let me recognize two things. Number one, I think it's so dope the fact that they could at least come at you with this. My fear is that I just won't know. And she'll be coming to me, yes, dad, love you. You're the best, dad. And then leave and go out here and be you know, a whole different person and won't tell me shit. Yeah. So I'm glad that y'all have that level of communication. I think I, I, think <laughs> I swore uh that i wouldn't say anything to to her father and i haven't so i just won't let him watch until now <laughs> i'll be like no 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 no, no. watch that part fast forward between minute 12 and 26 yeah uh yeah it's hard my mother never talked to me about sex yeah i know a lot of us we never got you didn't get that the, talk you didn't get the talk no I mean, they told us, but don't do it, you know, just stay clear. But not like that intimate climax. There's going to be some things that, you know, my dad is kind of, you know, hey, man, you know what time it is. <laughs> I know what you're out there doing. Yeah, yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. Yeah, uh-huh. He gave me some. You got the you know, nods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, father, you got that. tell me. Show what? what? <laughs> But we figured it out. And that's why a lot of times kids go into stuff not knowing and they figure it out and they're clumsy and the curiosity kills the cat. And I was a curious kid, you know what I mean? So Oh yeah, it kills the cat, it eats the cat, it hits uh -huh. the cat, it All that. smashes the cat. It does a lot to the cat. Yeah. That's why I need my children's kittens to stay untouched. Right. I said, you have to wait until you're an adult. Right. Don't do adult things as a kid because right. you'll get the adult consequences. Man. And I got a baby. Put that on the shirt. I got a car <laughs> seat in the car. We ain't about to be rocking right. two car seats. Trying to make Her baby, grandma, my grandbaby, right. what the fuck? Right. All right. Don't make me no grandma <laughs> under 40. Right. My mama used to say that. And yeah. I used to be like, mama, quit tripping. You had me in 19. I got to do what I got to do. Now I'm like, I get it, mama. Right. I don't want to be no. Right. Imagine somebody calling you grandpa yeah. before you 40 where, where are your kid where's your kid right now because now she knows <laughs> he just like remember she, was talking about she that better now. be doing japanese homework right yeah she's doing some homework <laughs> <Dow. laughs> i don't know Cute little boys is less a thing and i was like i went to church i made good grades but we curious we Did still you make good grades Charlie? I made good grades. I was, you know, 3.0. I wasn't like scholar, but I was decent. And in middle school, I ran for student council president and shit. It was actually pretty, pretty dope how it happened. I was not like this nerd, but I, I managed to use comedy to work to where I was cool oh, with everybody. I did that too. So anyway, we had this big student council meeting in front of the whole school. You know, they bring everybody to the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And I went up and did my student council speech. High school? This was middle school. Middle. So I was wow. in seventh, I think, seventh I'll or eighth grade. <laughs> And that was the point where I recognized the power within the confidence of what I could do. Because mm. just to be up there was like, all right, bet. 
But it was the most incredible. I'll never forget it because this was around the time I think Big Mama's House may have come out, and everybody was kind of using uh, the bomb. Remember when the bomb came yes. out? Yeah, oh, be the bomb. So I don't even remember what was all on my speech, but it ended with the bomb. <laughs> so I said blah blah blah, yada yada yada. You vote for me, I'll make sure. Blah blah blah. But most importantly, fellow kids and Americans, <laughs> if you vote me as student council president, <laughs> I will make sure. <laughs> This is next upcoming school year. We'll be the, the bomb. bomb. Niggas went crazy. Ah! Like Obama with that change. Right, right, right. What? What changed? What? Right. What? Nigga, they went crazy. Yeah. And I won. And just like this current president we have, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, you won. I won. I was student council president. Yeah. W were you a Trump in middle school? I was not a Trump, but I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> he was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, just right. give it to him. Right. I was a lot more modest. And I liked, you know, just kind of being in that position. I learned. I was in part of different clubs and stuff. Okay. But that was a cool experience. And me. so you, you wanted to go into politics at all? When you left, no. no. Did no. you discover, though, your walk, like being able to be in front of a crowd? That was, was that the first time? That was, that was my first first time being in front of a crowd and I think from there I was heavily involved in my church mm. so we had plays that we would do at church and then sometimes they'd have speaking where you, you spoke church? Okay. I, went in, I was Baptist we went I went to one of them churches where they we went to you know second service they had mm. night service revival revival On Thursday night Thursday nights Friday night vacation Bible school oh VBS church baseball team they go there <laughs> Everything the church, that. the thing about our church is we had so many different activities. A lot of them down south churches, mm -hmm. you can do so much there. So I was great Baptist. to learn those, mm -hmm. you know, uh, type of traditions, you know, uh, at a young age. But that's how actually I met my wife, too. Because I did a speaking. She went to the same church and the same school. So I did like a little uh, speech at church, you know, Matthew 6 and 33. If you read here. Yeah. Please stand for da -da -da. the reading of the Lord's word. Did you pull one of them? Da -da -da. But I threw some little jokes in there. Wow, you threw jokes on the yeah, scripture? Yeah, yeah. And the church was laughing. And uh, my wife's mom was like, look at that. Look at that church. Look at that right there. That's all you need man. to be talking to right now. How old are you here? I was like 15. Right, because y'all are 15. Sweetheart. So I was like freshman. No, I was a sophomore. Sophomore, junior in high school. Come so I was just now really developing my confidence. Okay, question. That was, those were big moments for me. Those two right there. Question. Still, yeah. All right, Reverend Charlie. That was uh, here's the thing I have to ask. Did yeah. you and your wife engage in intercourse before marriage? <laughs> just going. Look, here's grandma, why I'm asking. Grandma, grandma push pause. Okay, push pause, grandma, Granny. I'm so sorry. Here's why I'm asking. Yeah. Because my daughter is growing up in the church and her boyfriend also. Let me just tell you. I was waxing that ass at a young age, okay? <laughs> <laughs> at a young age. And, and this is supposed to be about your story, but you opened the floodgates to this one. Grandma, don't unpause Grandma, yet. Stay paused. Watch the next episode, right. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma, just look, come back. And to my wife's mama, come back, because I think she still don't know about this <laughs> shit. Oh, they're not going to lie. I got caught okay, over listen. there one day. What? So I'm at the crib over her mom. Her mom used to work. She was like, she used to uh, clean houses. So mm -hmm. She used to have clients. She had to go do this, and she had her own cleaning service business. Mm -hmm. And one day, I'm over there chilling, you know what I'm saying? And my wife would look out of the blinds behind us and see, oh, she's pulling up. So I think I got caught, jammed up one day. She pulled up, and I'm like, oh, shit, what, what do I do? Where do I go? And it was an apartment. And she was on the second floor. So there was only one way to get out. Mm -hmm. So next thing I know, I'm trapped in the closet, the <laughs> closet, the closet. And I'm, I got the door closed. But, you know, she just started coming in as I closed the door. I couldn't even close it all the way because she probably have heard that door close. So I'm inside just nervous. And now she's talking, hey, how was your day? Da, 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 da. And I'm just in there sweating. It seemed like three days had passed. She's sitting there like, I knew some shit went down in 1994 when I got home at five. She didn't notice nothing. Yeah. And I stood in there for like an hour, it seemed. My legs was getting tired. Finally, she uh, went to the back to go take a bath or something. And I took off at the patio, opened the patio, and I had to jump off the second floor. Oh, my Lord. To shuffle my ass the on around, hop in my daddy's old Cadillac and shuffle it on. The home. things men do for ass. Well, that shit, that's what I'm saying. You the think they doing Japanese thing. homework? Right. No, dude, stop, Charlie. I'm She's sorry. Done it. I'm sorry. I'm just getting it in. This is I what. I, I, but I asked you that. Here's why I asked you <laughs> about having sex, growing up in the church. Yeah. Because I was telling my daughter, I said, "Y'all try to fuck. Go ahead, try to fuck. Right. Y'all gonna get that Christian sex guilt." Mmm. As a teenager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that sets into it, too, but. Yeah. 
Still gonna wax that ass. You know? No, he's not. That Christian Gill sits with you, man. But once you experience that, <laughs> no, you know, at a young age, Don't watch somebody this. you really care about. Children. And again, you heard the music we were just playing. You all in love. Drew Hill, <laughs> Boys to Men was popping so at the time. I'm down, down on bending knees. Oh my God, I was in love with Boys to Men, but they were, they sang differently than Jodeci. Yeah, Jodeci, no. Jodeci was. They was about. They were straight to the point. They went straight to the point. Right. They was like, open your legs. It was like, baby, let your head down. Right, right. You know, he was like, okay, all right, that's what you say. Right. Boys, they will take you on a date first. Take you on a date. Jodeci was like, hey, yo, 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 I'm going to move these coats out the back of the car. (laughs) Just bend over real quick. He was like, what? What? But you, some females like that, though. Yeah. I've been married too long. I realized the other day I've never dated as an adult. Me neither. What? Me how, neither. Old, how old were you when you got married? Well, 22. Okay. I was, I was young as shit. But y'all was still together. Still together. <laughs> no, you couldn't tell me shit. I was like, this is the one, Dad. You, yeah. no, you don't fucking understand, Dad. <laughs> you don't fucking understand. Son, you need to get more pussy in right, your life. Right, that's what Just a couple more hoes. Right. I was like, yeah. no hoes, Father. A good Christian man. <laughs> I made my choice. She's fucking amazing. The best pussy in the world, like, Dad. It was like SpongeBob. Five. <laughs> I was like, ah, nigga, what am I do? I ain't got no dating experience. What the fuck am I comparing this to? <laughs> I have, I have more single friends than married. Yeah. And I just was like, Me too. I was like, yo, you on Bumble though? Yeah. Like, I just wanna. What's it like? What, what you doing? Right. I couldn't imagine. It's so many. No I idea. Out here now. Wow, it's so Charlie, many. Charlie, we share that. So, I'm glad we found some cheers wow. to. Give me a little yes. bing. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we do. That's something. Because it's, it's a gift and a curse. It's good because it's like, you know what? I'm high real estate out here. If I ever <laughs> jump back in a single market, I'm high real estate. I don't know. I, don't I ain't been like, out here like talking I about. Good. I don't feel confident. If if I said this the other day, if my husband died, I never say divorce. I say death. I yeah. always just put him in the I just put him in the grave. That's the only way it's, it. it's out. Right. It's it. <laughs> and I was like, if he dies, that means I got to go back out and date again. I got four kids. I'm not going to tell him I got kids. You can't. You got to pop it up on. I got to find a new reason to explain this double chin. I'm going to be like, I work (laughs) at the conveyor belt at Krispy Kreme. Bam. And so I just, I'm trying to get it off. You can be like, you still got the hookup though? That's why I really, I'm like, dude, you got to stay healthy. You got to stay healthy and fit. You can't die because I don't have a game plan for when it's time to get a new sponsor for these kids. Four. Four. Yeah. All girls. Bro. Yeah, that's that thing. I mean, some dudes that won't want to be stepdaddies, but all five. <laughs> that's a big responsibility with four girls and you. Yeah, that's five. That's five. Total. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot of hair to do. Man, so my wife and my daughter, I'm like, that's that's two, and I'm I'm almost ready to tap. I'm about to tap out. <laughs> yeah, just to be, to be yeah. Did you grow up with work. sisters? So I grew up with my mom, and I had an older sister. So that get that really, really get tapped in my sensitive side. Mm-hmm. So I've always been sensitive, you know, and listen, try to understand feelings yeah. and all of that. Very, very sensitive. So you felt prepared. I was, I felt prepared okay. for that. So I'm grateful that my mom, and my my my, uh, my sister gave me that, you know, uh, um, you know, perception mm-hmm. of things I to grow up with. But you know, it's a gift and a curse too. Because then you yeah. end up, you know, understanding stuff. Maybe you should, none of you shouldn't be over. You should be putting your foot. Down, you know what I'm saying? So you end up being the nice guy. And I was told I was the nice guy for a long time. Like, I, I grew up in a, a all-white neighborhood off top. And then we moved to an area that was mixed. Mm. And high school was all black. Mm. And I used to try Damn, to talk to the black girls. I went the same girls. thing. Yeah. Wow. So I grew up in an all-white neighborhood. Yeah. High school. Yeah. Boom. These are niggas. These Get are niggas. Them. Right. Oh Welcome. You talking real proper, my nigga. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I went to Summerfield over here. <laughs> Y'all didn't okay. Sorry, they I apologize. Made, they made fun of my dad cussing because my dad said "motherfucker." Uh, and they were like, your daddy, why your daddy talk like a white dude? Right. I was like, y'all have to understand where I'm from. Right. I moved in eighth grade. It was so bad. Yep. They me too. They actually. started a rumor that I had Down syndrome. Damn, that's a horrible rumor. How'd you prove them wrong? <laughs> what do you do? I found out what did it. Read a sentence. Uh, then skip. <laughs> Uh, uh, excuse me, teacher. <laughs> teacher, I'd like to answer the whole equation. Right, right. Got some. Can I teach the class, please? It was, it was, it was horrible. My whole, I think by the end of the year, the school dance, one dude was like, "She ain't got Down syndrome, y'all. Look at this ass. She ain't got Down syndrome." Seeing you out there doing this shit right here. I was like, "Can can people with Down and I love Down syndrome people. No offense to any of right, them, of course, but I was like, what the fuck? Where did this rumor come from?" Right. And the girl who was like shadowing me was like, "I think it's because you wear those same overalls." Damn. Couple of weeks. Them Damn. overall was was cute. Which I don't ones? care what was no. it the they had, Bosh Bosh Bakash? Was it the It was the, like the, it was Jabot? like they didn't even they look low key, they look like a huge, like just one onesie. 
With like the ones pockets. that Chappelle wear on the specials? Like the work, yes, the work yes. Stuff? But okay. but they had two big pockets in the front, okay. no pockets in the back. I don't fuck with pants no more than I got pockets in the back because okay. it just don't do you right. Yeah. Women know. We yeah, know. Yeah, pockets in the back. Yeah, I don't yeah. Fuck, No pockets in the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, bitch. You to balance out the booty fluff with the, with the yeah, pockets. Yeah, I don't. Uh, asymmetrical. You been done gone to the bathroom, pull your pants up the wrong way, the line going like That's this. That's facts. Fuck yeah, with it looks it. weird. Mm-hmm. The teachers will do some shit like that. they like, look at Miss Burner <laughs> Dead up here with the fucking... <laughs> right. <laughs> Diaper booty ass, fix your pants. <laughs> so I know what you mean. Yeah, mean. so I think it cleared up by the time I got to high school, but it was just, it was just black people everywhere, and yeah. I, I, lo- I didn't grow up with that. Yeah, yeah. And and I think culture shock. Right? Ooh. Yeah. And and it's Indiana, so it's oh, still yeah. not even real black. Yeah. Right. They got yeah. pockets of ghetto ness over right. here, right. whatever cousins and mine over here. Right. But I was like, I really don't think I know. And as a kid, I don't remember this. I have a cousin who was always saying, you know, you thought you were white. I was like, no, oh, I didn't. Yeah. But I looked back and I thought, white was a mentality, yeah. an yeah. energy. Yeah. So hell yeah, I thought I was white. I had that too, where I we used to have self, um, I didn't just hate myself per se, but I did, was like, man, what the fuck, man? Why doesn't my hair blow in the motherfucking wind, mama? What is this shit? Where's the perm socks? I'm like, right. at Duke kits. I was like, nigga, if you don't curl my shit, I want to bang mama so bad. If you could just give me a little fucking... So I can blow it and put oh it behind. Oh my gosh, the white girls are hard to come up against with um, the hair. Yeah, shit. So as a kid, it was very, it was tough. So this new generation of kids now, like our kids, now at least can see black love, black mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. celebrated, black people on the natural hair, braids, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff being more acceptable than it was yeah. back in the day because you yeah. were, it, it was tough. It was that, more tough. That's why I miss New York. There was a lot of. You know, yeah. you didn't really know who was who. You look at somebody, you think they were like, they're Cuban. Right. And he was a like, West Indian. West Indian. Yeah, and, yeah. and they didn't really care about race at right. the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. New York came together so beautifully after Thanks. 9-11. I was like, wow. And and here, though, it's divided. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, shit, my kids, how many black friends you got again, baby? How many? Right. One. Right. Two. Right. Your friend got weave? Oh, no. We're going to finish y'all right now. Right. And and I'm I'm scared. My oldest, she talked a little valley. Yeah. Like, every time she t- FaceTimes my mom, she's like, hey, Cracker. Now, okay, let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> to your grandma? My, my mother. Your mom. My mother. Or her grandma. Her grandma. Yeah. My mother, when my, my daughter's the oldest grandchild, and yeah. she got to pick the, the nickname for my mom. Gotcha. And she chose. Grandma. My mom wanted her grandkids to call her Graham Cracker. Graham Cracker. Okay. That's a lot of syllables for a child. That's like two. So all the kids just say Cracker. Wham. Okay, they I'm trying to practice it. it. I know, you can't do it. So they just, they only remembered one and they call it Cracker. Right. Damn. For 17 years almost, they've been calling that woman Cracker. Damn. And my mama's always like, this, she, this, it's my nickname, baby. She not being racist. Damn. I was like, mama, damn, you didn't even encourage Graham? Like, right. that was an option. She went to Cracker. Yeah, so my daughter's on the phone like, hey, Cracker, hey, Cracker. And I'm just like, That's Fuck. an awkward conversation, like a CBS or something. Hey, Cracker, what's up? <laughs> Why are white people the only ones at CBS? Why is that? I don't know. Trader Joe's? You can't answer the phone and talk to a granny at Trader Joe's. That ain't cracker. Yeah, no, you can't. We've we've it's been we were in I think a pediatrics office and she was like, Okay, cracker, I call you and the doctor was like I was like, I promise. Yeah, he talked about y'all when y'all left. He did. did. (laughs) I've actually had two incidents. I I I wrote a song for my kids called You Are My Birth Control. Ah. And I sang it to my pediatrician. And she was like, I don't like that song. You are my birth control. Oh, that, I, I get what you're going with But I'll come see your stand-up. I said, bitch, if you don't like the song, you ain't going to like none of my <laughs> right, material. Right, It's just broken it's down. It's just a song. It's right. just me saying, I don't want no more kids. They're my birth control. Right. Do I need to have more? And then I did. There it is. Song ain't work. You need to do a remix. <laughs> I'll hop on the remix with you. <laughs> yeah, I do. I think I'm done. Dope. No, 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 no. I'm done. I got my tube set. Dope, dope, yeah. dope. Oh really? So you done that? Look at you. You was like, wait, what? Wait, wait, what, what? Yeah, I'm. No, no, no. I'm real, real. I'm old, Charlie. Nah, man. I started young. I'm old. This uterus of mine is like, bitch. I wish you would put some sperm in this motherfucker. Yeah, you know That's you how my uterus life. talks to me. That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm almost forty now. Women who start. Look at good. 40. You look third, 32, 33. 30, Say go down. Stay 29. down. Twenty nine. I mean, your thirties so, was yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's why you right there. I mean, I'm trying. Okay. I'm noticing. What you, you using? Shea butter, weight? girl? What's your secret? Water? Shea <laughs> little butter? Coconut oil. Okay, little coconut oil. Okay. Little Jehovah, Jehovah, whatever they call it. Some, <laughs> some argon. I'm noticing when you gain weight and you get older, mm-hmm. it don't get, it don't go back or up. It goes down. Mm-hmm. 
So like the weight pulls you down. Like it's closer to the ground. Nigga. I was like, whoa, this is some new shit. I'm trying. Aging is not fun. I'm I'm not like there's this I get this cough every now and then. Mm. Not like a COVID cough, like a clear your throat. Mm. I'm like, I ain't even ate nothing. What's this? Oh, that's awkward in 2020. The knees. Trader Joe's trying to clear your throat. Niggas be, hey, man. And I'm going to tell you. With that shit. <laughs> Charlie, because of you, uh-huh. every time I have sex and my hip pops, yeah. think of your ass. Oh, yeah, with the joke, with the fucking I be, clack. I be halfway up that mountain. Right. And I be click, clack. Like, ah. Oh, like, fuck, fuck Charlie. <laughs> fuck. You hear, you hear your bones. You hear your muscles and shit. I can do without all of that. Put the Jodeci on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I try, but then the kids yourself. will hear that you shit. Right, you right. Be like, what were you and dad listening to? Right, right. Them guys talking about knocking boots. What's right. knocking boots? I had a kid. Kurt my- Franklin. Stop. All the people say that might kill the mood, though, too. You'd be like, it will. Awkward. My grandma, when we got married, my husband's grandmother was like, put Jesus in the room, baby. Just put him in the room when y'all making love. I was like, no, grandma. No, I don't love Jesus looking down on me. He don't need to see that. He right. didn't even fuck when he was on the earth. He don't need to be in the room with nobody. <laughs> Seeing what we doing up Seeing here. Seeing what we doing. Right. I'm good. Let Jesus think of me as a holy angel. Right. But Not knows. sucking dick. Right. But Sorry. Grandma, I hope you have stayed paused the <laughs> whole time. <laughs> Sorry, Cracker. Oh, Cracker, you, you can't we, watch we expo- this. We exposed your baby over here. Yo. Yes. Ooh, thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate you coming thanks. through, man. This was dope. You had a fire score, man. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Thank You're going to do a great job season three. I'm looking forward to yeah, it, man. I appreciate yeah. it, man. I feel like we were just, we, we always talk about just the, uh, you know, the platform, man. I'm just, I'm grateful for the platform. Yeah. I'm grateful to, to work with such a dope team. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been fun, I'm man. I'm happy for you. I can't wait to see you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know when it's going to be with this, you know. <clears throat> COVID. Shit, COVID, if you listening, though, if you out there, if right. you watching this right. shit, come here, nigga. Come, on, come, come. Let's end this shit today. Wear your mask. Pull up. Wear your mask. Pull up. Okay? But I wish you would. I wish you would. The fuck go the fuck, body wherever here. you go, wherever you was, just I'm go. I'm a dog when I see COVID. It's on. Damn, I, I just, I just, I can't. Right. I can't. Sorry. But I'm glad you, you you called and you had me on. It was fun. I yeah. I love. I haven't shared that story before about Lena. You yeah. know, and yeah. so shout out to Lena Waite and shout her people because she genuinely mm-hmm. does help the come ups. You know, that's dope. In this industry, you need it. You need people who are. Um, willing to to just bend down and help you. It's just like Eminem. And I never knew this about Eminem. He mm-hmm. had shared that Elton John helped him get sober. Mm. And it wasn't made public. He just said, had he never reached back and helped wow. me, I wouldn't be who I am today. Wow. And I'm like, damn, who who would have thunk, right? Right. So I'm, I'm all, and, and Lena doesn't boast it, you know? Yeah. She's not, you know, big on it. I, I think... The goal, obviously, for all of us is to succeed to a point, but I think it's very important to help the people coming up. Pay it forward. So now you're going to be able to do the same. So when you get ready to write your next shit, <laughs> write Call your boy, your boy. Up in <laughs> Charlie, I got this role over here for a right. short person. Do you mind? A guy with a little dick. Could you play this part? I'll be like, I'll play him. I'll play him. <laughs> you damn right I will. You're not going to see my shit, but I'll play the character. Give me the fake prosthetic you want me to wear because my right. shit's down to my knee. Right. 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 You're that guy, right? Hey, wifey. Testify. Call in. Real okay, quick. hold on right. one second. No. <laughs> Granny, for real. Granny, just don't watch the episode. Nah, sorry about that, Miss Cracker Ma'am. Sorry. No, I'm talking to your grandma. She don't, My gra- oh. Your grandma was paused early. Oh, yeah. Do y'all get oh. this raw every time? No, only when you here. Fuck! But I'm so glad to have you. John set new goals in my life, John! Thanks for joining 2021. 20, 2022. Let us know where we can find you. Anything you got coming up. Oh, so I finished my first you. book. Oh, shit. That's dope. Yeah, I That's did. Awesome. COVID be pulling shit out of niggas. That is awesome. I'm going to get baptized wow. after all. Wow. Uh, I did finish my first book, so I'm in, I'm just f- doing the damn thing, you know, is deadlines. It and, not yet. I, okay. 2021. That's dope. Eve, we need to talk. Hey, be on the lookout for that, man. Well, yeah. Hey, what's your Instagram? Please, please. please Luke.Ashley. Please. L-U-C dot Ashley. Um. I'm not on Twitter anymore. Yeah. Facebook, I think I'm on there. I don't know. I'm trying to stay possibly, young. possibly. Friend request long and shit. Friend request long. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's mainly. I mean, always working, but you know, right now I'm pushing for the book. So already. All right, man. Yo, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody for coming and enjoying the show. Uh, special shout out to your daughter. Hey, hey. 
You stay your ass off of that mountain, okay? <laughs> All y'all kids. Stay off the mountain, children. Yo, you've been tuning in to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I've been your boy, Charlie Wilson. Special shout out to my lovely special guest here, the queen, Luke Ashley. Y'all have a good night. We'll see y'all next time. Look, look at y'all out here tuning in, okay? okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby, I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support, all things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do.